I've taught you much, my little droogies. Now tell me what you had in mind, Georgie boy. Hello, my droogies. This is uh, Podcast Orange, episode two. I'm your host, Tom Crescenzo, and to my virtual left is my co-host, Jack Siegel. How's it hanging, my man? How's it hanging? It's all right. I feel good. I got my Hell yeah. Stella Artois, got my General Chows. I'm feeling all right. Asian, though? Chinese food in a time like this? Yeah, I'm. it's controversial. Actually, the Chinese place that I went to... I had a lot of people there. They were doing great business. Um, I guess everybody. Yeah, most of them were on ventilators, but they were good. <laughs> but they're fine anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah, there was just like a line out the door. It was, you know, it's like, okay. Oh. Um, Could you imagine if you had um, the coronavirus and you had to try to eat like sweet and sour pork? It would probably be impossible. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, all, that, all like... that fattiness to it. it. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is, is that like I, I, I had General Chow's tonight. And eating halfway through, you just feel like a piece of shit because it's just so filling and just so much cholesterol, and you just feel like ugh, feel bloated. Yeah, you know. And, and you also like, you also are a piece of shit, so that doesn't help. It de- you know it goes together. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Everybody always says like, oh, an hour after you eat Chinese food, um, you feel like you have to eat again. But I I feel the exact opposite. I feel like I never want to eat again after I eat no. Chinese food. See, for me, it's different. After I eat Chinese food, it's not that I have to eat again an hour later. It's just that the next time I eat, the only thing I want to eat is like a cat or a dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, they like, cat. It just changes the taste buds. Cat soup, you know. Mm, it's That's like shark fin good. soup. Yeah. People love to just cut off the fins of those sharks. <laughs> yeah, they just love to. Literally, like, it's like. It's like if you were just walking down the street and then some like unknown force grabbed you, sliced off your arms and legs, <laughs> and just literally you're like screaming, you're like, "Fuck no, they no, just, no they my just, legs!" And then they just let, and then they just put you back, like they just put yeah. you down on a park bench, and they're like, "Yeah, you're good." I like human arm salad. So I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah. like, I don't like the other parts of the human, just the arms. I just leave yeah, the rest I, of their body. I prefer- I like middle finger Cheerios personally. <laughs> mm. Just making different like food products out of body parts, like penis soup. You say, anybody want wieners? Apple. They're literally wieners, like literally, they're actual human penises. Damn. But I'm calling them wieners. They're not even on Fear Factor, or you're just eating dicks. Yeah, you know. Yeah, no, you're just behind a Home Depot waiting for the food truck, eating literal human penises severed and put into hot dog buns. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think we had a... Uh, I've gotten varied responses, speaking of the devil, of people saying that we talked too much about sucking dick last episode. And... Uh, well, I like, mean... I've... My friend Manny said that we didn't talk enough about it. <laughs> that's just because he's fixated. <laughs> I mean, I personally think if people want to get in the way of me enjoying my passions, then they can go fuck themselves. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I... I have things that I believe in that I believe need to be said, and dick sucking is by far a, like a strong suit of my belief belief system. Well, this you can call it a centerpiece. Project. Yeah, you, know. you can call it a centerpiece of my theology. I mean, how am I supposed to throw that away? We just talk about what we love. Yeah, we talk We're about human. what makes us feel human. And speaking of feeling human, Tom, there's a nice segue by the way, uh, by my part. Uh, Tom, uh. It was. Our good friend Tom's birthday last week. Woo! Oh, yeah, me. Thank you. Thank you. 25. I am 24 years old. 24. But yeah, I tweeted. I tweeted that like since the entire year of 2020 is basically fucked, I might as well be 25 at this point. I thought you were 25, huh? No, I'm 24. Okay. As of two days ago, I'm 24 years old. I already want to kill myself. No, 25. 24 is fine. 25 that's uh, a shitty birthday man like i'm not saying that 25 isn't worse but people will say 24 is fine and it's like is it though i don't know if it's fine but i well i personally hated my 25th birthday because that was like i i experienced what like a, a like a midlife crisis is but it was like a quarter life crisis i turned 25 <laughs> and i was just like fuck like i haven't done anything with my life and that it was, was like, like a 20 <laughs> 
You're like, I'm already a quarter way through my life and I've only been jerking off for six years. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> I had to catch up later on. Yeah. Um, and, you know, 25... Yeah, no, 25 is a shitty birthday. I don't know. I hope the bir I hope my birthday is better. What did you do for your birthday? I mean, I was quarantined, so I basically just got drunk as fuck and high as shit oh. at my house. Like, your parents got a cake or anything? Yeah, my family, like, made me a cake and stuff, and they gave me, like, cards or whatever. We, we still did, like, a happy birthday, like, gay little celebration. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Well, you know, at, at this point, like, I was just, like, I just kind of <laughs> want to treat this like any other day. You're just sitting there pouting. I don't yeah. care about my birthday. My birthday's ruined. Fucking if my birthday has to be ruined, then everyone in the room's day is ruined. Yeah. They're just like a... Um, like one of those people that goes out and has like a bad time, so they just want to make everybody else feel shitty too. Exactly. Well, I'm not happy, you're not happy. Birthdays are I'm fun. Not happy. I, I love no. birthdays generally. I think they're my favorite holiday because... It's the one day where you just focus on yourself and you don't have to, you can just be selfish and not care about anybody else. Right. And nobody it's like your own. Shit. It's like your own personal Christmas. Like, yeah, exactly. No, you get like, you can literally be like, I don't give a fuck about you. And somebody be like, well, it's your birthday. You know, you do what you want. Yeah. You don't have to care. It's crazy. The shit that I that you can get away with just because it's like the day you were born is is nuts. Like oh, yeah. I'm at work the other day and it was busy as fuck, and I was just like I knew it was busy as shit, and I knew that if I left early that it would be a huge problem for my manager. But I I just went up to her and I was just like, Hey, can I leave early since it's my birthday? And she's like, Yeah, fine. And I'm like, Cool, see you later, bitch. <laughs> yeah, because it's like if she says no then she's the asshole. It becomes a, it becomes like you have an immense amount of power on your birthday where you can yeah. just do what you want. You can just be a dick. You can just do, you can get a, just shit face drunk and just throw up everywhere and just be you able to go. Like, oh, you, know. you could go to a restaurant and even as a full grown adult, you can literally tell them it's my birthday. I want you, you guys to, to sing a song for me. <laughs> and they have to fucking do it. They have to get together and sing for you. And then you can literally just like like while they're like mid song, you just you could just take a sip of your drink and then just like spill awesome it face. right on their faces. Yeah, and just like throw it at them. It'd be like, that fucking song sucked. It's my birthday, and that's the shit you give me. That's what you expect me to take home as a good birthday song. You, Actually, you, could even, you could even just stop them halfway through and be like, ah, that was off key, start again. And just yeah, have right. them sing over and over again until, like, you know, just be like the guy in Whiplash. Just be like, it's not my tempo. And just have them <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> just like, you could literally just get, like, a conductor's excited. wand. You could just be like the guy from fucking that movie Whiplash and be like, my tempo. Yeah. Well, you're out. <laughs> Throw a chair at them. I'm literally He's just like, like tapping. Two, I'm like tapping two forks together over and over, just like <laughs> this fast, this fast. Just slap them in the face. <laughs> like rushing or dragging now. Pick uh, up like a raw salmon and just backhand them with it. <laughs> Remember when you were younger and you go to a restaurant? At, did you ever do this where you just tell people like it's your friend's birthday and it wasn't, and they just have to fucking like sing happy? I never did that right? myself. Uh, I've never done that myself, but it seems like it would be hysterical to do. It was funny when you were like 16 and your friends were like, well, it's not my birthday. And then like these waiters that are making minimum wage just go out and be like, all right, happy <laughs> birthday. It's like, hey, the joke's on you. It's not really his birthday, but you're still singing, you fucking asshole. You yeah, get right. Better, <laughs> get a better profession. That's when you learn <laughs> to be classist is when you're a teenager. Dude, it's funny because it's like that prank, it's like it's framed as though it's like a prank on your friend who who it isn't actually his birthday. But really, you're just pranking these poor fucking like waiters, fucking working to the bone waiters and waitresses. You're just cracking these people who literally have to work on tips to support their children. Yeah, and they're yeah. just walking over like ready to do their job right because you told them it was someone's birthday and then you get to just be like it's not and laugh at them this, and also you're exploiting the fact that they want to do something nice for you it's like the whole idea is they want to they want to celebrate your birthday and treat you well and you're just like taking advantage of that and like yeah, making right. it a fucking prank on them this to be they don't even dick. want to 
Yeah. You're, you're actually taking advantage of something they have to do because their boss told them. So you're literally yeah, taking you're advantage right? of like an, a necessary function of their job for your amusement, just be, so that you can get a giggle and then they can go home and pop that next Valium and wonder if maybe <laughs> they should end it. Like <laughs> should tonight be the night. Maybe. Well, it's different when you go to a Mexican restaurant and not only do they sing happy birthday, but they get like the fucking mariachi band and da, 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 and they do that whole fucking song and dance. And yeah, then, and then the MS-13 comes out. And, and they just then the MS-13 comes them. out and they cut you. <laughs> it's like, wow, this is really authentic. Yeah, like, wow, this is so Latin American. This You're just getting so like realistic. stabbed to death. <laughs> You're just getting stabbed to death in a circle. You're like, I can't believe how... I can't believe the aesthetic of this place. <laughs> you got me your own personal gang, my own personal gangster mob. Thanks. Oh, and they're raping my wife too. This is the best birthday ever. <laughs> oh man. Um, <laughs> and meanwhile, some kid just like has a sombrero and he's ordering the fajitas. I'm like, mom, I'm a little scared. They're like, Mommy, are you okay? She's like, just don't look, sweetie. This is for Daddy. This is his special day. This is his birthday. This is where he always wants to go every year for some reason. He wanted to get just let him have it. He wanted to get milk <laughs> on his birthday. <laughs> they're literally like, they they're literally like cutting the words MS13 into your back. You're like, this is fucking amazing. And the machete, like, oh my god. I'm coming sure. back here every year for the rest of my life. And then his wife is just like, oh, my God, no. Five stars on Yelp. Uh, Buy a five-star Yelp review. Like, the best service I've ever received. Absolutely top-notch. Amazing. They really stabbed me. I mean, I was a, a bus boy, and I had to sing happy birthday. I wasn't even a waiter, but they're like, everybody has to come out and fucking, ugh. Anyway. See, happy birthday is like, it's weird because... When you sing, even if you're singing it for a family member, it's like you go to sing it and there's no like, like nobody, if you sing it well, it makes you seem weird, you know? Like, yeah. if you actually sing, sing happy birthday, like the right way, like, happy like it, it almost sounds more acceptable to just be like, happy birthday. Uh, yeah. Most people don't do like the whole Marilyn Monroe thing where they just go like, happy birthday. And just make it all, like, sensual yeah. for their loved ones that they're cheating on. Like, I would personally like it if, uh, uh, us excluding my immediate family, if anyone in my life wants to plan a surprise party for the future for me, just just say happy birthday. Please don't sing to me. I do not need your song. Like, all I need is the cake and the envelopes that have money that you're giving me. Just get to the presents. I don't mind. Yeah, I, I want to... more song. I want... I want them to get like a real singer to come down and like get you know what I want them to get me Courtney out of retirement and sing Happy I'll, Birthday. I'll tell them what what I'll tell you what they, I want them to give me. I want them to get like I want them to give me five prepaid OnlyFans subscriptions to like the hottest girls oh, I know. Like, OnlyFans. That's what I'm. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about OnlyFans. Yeah. Uh, that is a fucking. <laughs> now that's what you call a segue. That is, a, that was smooth. We're getting better. At this. this is like second yeah. episode. We're really like getting yeah, episode like, two. Bro. We're already on segues. I mean, who knows? We might even have sound effects soon. Oh, if we can be as good as uh, Greg Opie Hughes. Um, oh, if only we could be as great as the legendary Greg Opie legendary Hughes. Very Opie. Uh, but OnlyFans. I actually just learned about this recently, and. For those of you who don't know, because I guess there are some people that don't know. Um, I mean, maybe. OnlyFans is a website where um, women and sometimes men, I guess, sell pictures of themselves. But it's mostly used for nudity and pornographic reasons. And then people uh, buy naked photos of people online. And it's really this is the, during this. This quarantine. is the expert speaking. Yes, yeah, exactly. I've got a whole selection of them well it's really spiked during quarantine uh i've seen a lot more people doing that now that they're like listen i'm selling nude photos of myself not only on only fans but on snapchat premiums and uh i just yeah. I, don't, I don't see the point or the purpose snapchat was actually first only fans was kind of invented as a way to like because i don't think snapchat itself really condoned that 
So OnlyFans was just like, hey, here, hey, you want it? You want to be a whore? Here's the be a whore app. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, it's Snapchat just like, Premium is like that. Snapchat yeah. Premium is where you just uh, it's it's made for nudity and pe- True. people get money from it. I just don't see it the makes, point to it. It makes me think of like that old like those old like iPhone commercials where it's like. It's like, I want to be a whore, but I don't know how to be a whore from the comfort of my own f- home. And then Steve Jobs just comes in like, there's an app for that. <laughs> and then he, and then he neglects his daughter. And was like, well, that's yeah, then he neglects his commercial. daughter. And he abuses <laughs> the Chinese slaves in the Apple factories and forces them to make an iPhone that could support OnlyFans. And he doesn't get the medicine for his cancer diagnosis. But, what a um, fucking loser. <laughs> but it's funny that you say, because more people are definitely pushing that type of stuff now with the quarantine. Yeah. Like I, I was telling, I was telling all of you guys um, over the video um, or the audio chat, I think. And I told you several, like I literally, I had that girl, this girl um, who like, I met her at a bar that I was doing a show at and like all my friends were like, Oh, you should hook up with her. And then like a couple of people actually tried to set me up with her to hook up, but I was just way too fucked up. I couldn't spit any game. Not that I'm good at spitting game, but I could. I was if I had even the slightest bit of skill, it was replaced with alcoholic slurs and gurgles. Like, yeah, and you're usually awkward hard. as shit, so it's like it was even yeah. worse than normal. Yeah, it was like I'm. I was both awkward and I had like Similac disease or some shit. <laughs> just but just um. Boring. But anyway, so yeah, I didn't get to hit on this girl because I was too drunk. And then weeks later, the quarantine happens. And, you know, I'm sitting alone at home, bored. I see a message on Instagram, and it's from that girl. And it just says, hello. And I was, like, super excited. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, is this chick, like, messaging me? Like, is she? does she remember me? Is she, like, into me? And then I click into the message. And when I saw the whole thing, what it actually said was, hello. Please subscribe to my OnlyFans for exclusive <laughs> content. And then just a link. Just literally just a link, like, right here. And I'm like, oh, man. Well, it's like... I thought it... It's I didn't scheming. realize they were just trying to sell me something. <laughs> it's always scheming. There's always a fucking scheme now with, like, these dating apps. I was on this app called HUD, and uh, it's, it's basically just crud. I know, that's some expert comedy right there. <laughs> But, uh, right. You really are sounding like an old school radio DJ. You're like, good, these, broads are always, these broads are always scheming. What is it with women? Why can't what they just let us men do? have it? No, but it's not just, it's just always, it's not women that are doing this. It's men pretending to like catfishing people. True. They'll be, they'll be like, hey, you want to hook up? Send me a, send me some money. What the fuck are you talking about? No. I've had like... <laughs> I've heard of, like, you've obviously heard of the whole thing where, like, somebody, like, matches with someone on Tinder and they agree to meet up and then they get, like, robbed. Yeah, it's always it's always a scheme. I, I hate these dating apps. There's always, like, a catch to it and you never know if the person's legitimate. Well, actually, most of the time you know because the way they talk sounds like a Russian bot. They're like, I like to make hookup with you. And it's like, dude, come on. If you're going to, like, pretend to be somebody, at least be more realistic with it and that just, like just the, make it so obvious that you're uh not yeah. a real person jack you're like the living incarnation of that jeff dunham puppet walter he was like oh i hate these dating apps like <laughs> well i think i old. think you're i think we're both sounding like andy rooney here going on probably yeah. you know um just but, thinking about young people but the thing with this uh only fans so there's this, uh, like, a uh, t- touch on this recently. It was kind of a, a month-old story, but there's this YouTuber. I think his name is iDubs, and he had this, uh, uh, he has this girlfriend who turned out to have an OnlyFans sub- page where she sells naked photos of herself. And so people were, like, kind of ripping on him because he had a, and then he went on and was, like, defending his girlfriend and saying that it's people that buy only fans are actually noble people because oh, they're supporting God. sex workers and it, <laughs> instead of like watching free pornography where it exploits people i'm like listen if you want to pay money because like you know somebody will feel like hotter to whatever <laughs> like that's one you know you do whatever you want but don't yeah. act like you're some sort of hero and some sort right. of like noble like crusader for 
buying naked photos of people. Like that's the strangest it's like, yeah, logic ever. It's, it's and it's like you're not supporting. Like okay, you're supporting the idea of freedom of like to sell sex, but you're not supporting the sex the sex workers who are still like slaves in foreign countries who are getting right. beaten by masters by promoting that you can fucking send pictures of your feet to 13 year olds on OnlyFans as long as they kick you like 25 bucks. Like yeah, you're not, you're not fucking, you're not supporting anybody who's actually in need. You're supporting an ideal, which is fine, but don't act like it's heroic. You're just supporting something you want to do. And like everything most people want to do, it's weird and disgusting. Like okay. I, for example, I want to jerk off every single day and I only want to use one towel because I don't want to wash towels. It's just my thing. Is Does it make me a hero? Absolutely not. Does it make me a brave person? Certainly not. I think you're it's pretty my brave. Thing, but yeah. I mean, I think it's brave. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say though, I, I think it's funny because before we were talking about like people getting tricked on like those dating apps or like only fans or people getting robbed from like dating apps. It's, I find it funny to think of like, what if two people, who are trying to rob someone both matched with each other on Tinder. <laughs> and they're just like, they're just really chatting up for each other. They're just like, Oh yeah, you seem really hot. Send me a pic of your dick. And then he gets like a fake dick and it's like, you like my dick baby. And then she's like, yeah, here's my tits. And it's like a fake picture of tits. And they just really convince each other. And then they're like, they if you don't, if you don't send me money, we're going to send these pictures of your fake genitals to people. And it's like, yeah. wait, are you Wait threatening me? I thought I was threatening you. It's like that meme yeah. with the two Spider-Mans like pointing at each other. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> Are you just like, Wait, was I robbing you? Who was robbing who? Are we yeah, both trying to rob somebody? It becomes like an Abbott and Costello routine. I don't. Yeah, right. It's just, it's just like the this shittiest thing you could do. Because people it just seems like. <laughs> It, you know what it reminds me of? It's uh, it's almost like this joke I used to like people used to say where it's like, what if two pedophiles tricked each other into thinking they were both kids on like a chat room and then met up at like the mall and they're like, wait a minute, tennis ball sixty nine, <laughs> <And then, laughs> little legs twenty two, no way, you're like no way, dude, like you were trying to fuck that kid, like I was trying to fuck you, I thought you were a kid, like no yeah. way. And they're like, it's that's how a lifelong friendship is set up. Is yeah. like, you just get a drink after that. <laughs> hey man, you want to hang out sometime? Sure, man. I'll show you my what methods and everything. And they just stop molesting kids, and then they just fuck each other. Yeah, and or they team how, up and molest more. Pedophilia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, like the fucking. <laughs> I mean, it's like the uh, what's that song? Um, that spongebob song with friend where it's like a friend is a friend to the very end and it's just like two pedophiles two pedophiles singing that together <laughs> they're just they're combing like the three hairs left on each other's balding heads <laughs> well you know speaking of like speaking of pedophiles uh speaking of, <laughs> there's like there's also people that will i mean this is actually pretty noble i guess i don't i don't say noble i've even used that word a bunch they're not like people some people will pretend to be like little kids to lore pedophiles and like do the whole to catch a predator shit yeah because that's yeah, a whole it, culture of people that good, do that for uh, for fun and it's weird it's, our good friend andrew bergen told us about that um there's actually a youtube channel called um what the fuck was it called it was like that's what it was called i don't know but it's literally i can't remember it's literally like on the tip of my tongue maybe i can like text him but it's literally like a YouTube channel dedicated to a guy who pretends to be a little kid so that he can lure pedophiles to like public places and then meet up with them and essentially just humiliate them. Just like, ha, ah, like you were trying to fuck a kid, but I'm the kid. Yeah. Like, they don't like, even tell the cops. They just, they just, yeah, they're not them. cops at all. They, they just like yell at them and they're like, you want to fuck a kid loser. And then they just like <laughs> have to run out of the Denny's. I just, I saw one of those videos and he's like, I don't know. pop squad. It's called pop squad. That's pop what it's squad. Called. Yeah. Andrew, I don't want to, I don't want to riff on it too much because I know Andrew talks about it a lot and he's a tread on his territory. Yeah. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to step on his toes there. We speaking got of, you, Bert. Speaking of how much I love to, uh, play with my yo-yo of <laughs> <laughs> speaking of which i was looking to become a yo-yo prodigy very soon <laughs> uh, i love bergen he's our yeah uh, good guy we've uh we've really like just said some horrible shit today 
It's good. Yeah, I mean, it is, this is great. This is what I wanted our podcast to be all about. Just saying yeah. horrible shit that comes to mind whenever. Well, you know, what's funny is that um, <clears throat> my uncle, like, was telling me that he listened to my podcast and he liked it. Your like, uncle? Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> really? Like, that's that's surprising because we say some really <laughs> fucked up shit on there. Yeah, right. Then, like, then my mom was like, I want to listen to your podcast. I'm like, fuck. All right. Yeah, right. And then I, oh, I my- can't be like, no, you can't listen to it. So I, I sent it to her. And this is oh. what she said to me. She was like, it's good, but you guys spend way too much time talking about sucking dicks. I'm like, <laughs> you know, that's an honest, <laughs> an honest critique. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, all right, fair enough. You know? <laughs> Well, you know what? If that's the review that we're going to get from your mom, <laughs> at least she didn't hate it. <laughs> yeah, she was like, it was funny. Just trim down the dick sucking commentary a little bit. Well, I'm just like, just a little less blowjob. Yeah. That's all I'm asking. Just a little less blow. Just a teeny bit less. Yeah, my dad was like, yeah, you're talking about like black dicks versus white dicks. It's like, why are you so- <laughs> Why are you guys so fixated on dicks? I'm like, did we talk about black dicks versus? We're white talking dicks? about like what if Dimitri Martin had a, a big black dick? Oh yeah! <laughs> and he's like, why are you guys so obsessed with sucking dick? And I'm like, I don't know, man. It's just it just came to mind. <laughs> See, if my dad said that to me, I would have just been like, well, you know, like father, like son, you raised me. <laughs> What the fuck do you expect, Dad? The balls don't fall far from the dick, you know? Exactly, the balls don't fall far from the dick. <laughs> oh, honestly, I'm glad, because of this conversation, I'm very glad that my parents are at least, like, aware of who I am enough not to want to listen to our podcast. Yeah. I feel like I present myself very differently. And, and with, I mean, people always act differently around different people, but... I, I feel like like my family, they they saw this and they're like, wow, that was funny. But I, I was surprised because I thought like this is only for a very specific type of person. Like, the you know, um, I mean, but I'm yeah. I'm glad it has mass appeal. You know, I think we're doing I think we're doing a good job. Let's continue to jack ourselves off. Speaking yeah, of I'm dicks, down. Like, see, it's, more it's, dicks. Just a, it's just like more a dicks. more dicks, more dicks, more dicks. Um, <laughs> That's just what it weird. This is just gonna be called the. This is just gonna be called the Dick Cast. Dick Cast. <laughs> Everything we talk about is dicks. <laughs> we should get fucking Ugh. Seth Rogen on here. That's all. Yeah, they, right. That's all they talk about in their movies. And yeah. You know, oh my god. <laughs> now nah, he's all right. I like Seth Rogen. No, nah, Seth Rogen's good. He, he has he has better. Like he's not my favorite actor or comedian, but he has good movies. No, he does. And he seems like a pretty uh, chill guy, to be honest. Like I would, I would have yeah. Seth Rogen on this podcast. He, yeah, right? he's like, no, his his movies are really funny. Um, some, some it's of like, them. yeah, I would have, I would have Seth Rogen. I'll just hit him up. <laughs> yeah, let's, I'll have, yeah, I'll, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna call him right now and see if he wants yeah. to be on this podcast. He's a who bro. Like, I'm sure biggest, he biggest. Who do you think is the biggest name we could realistically get within the year to be on this podcast? Like, if we really tried, like, yeah, I don't like, even know. Probably nobody actually big for now. Like, honestly, the biggest name we could probably get is like fucking Tony Landolfi or some shit. I bet. Yeah, exactly. No, no offense. No offense to Tony. He's a great guy and a good comic. He's just called a pretty big name. So, I mean, that's kind of a compliment in a way, you know. I mean, uh, he's a big name. He's certainly like a bigger name than us. us. Yeah, like, he's nobody. been around for longer. You're nothing. Um, you're weak. You guys are nothing but minuscule specks on the grand scale of comedy. I bet we could get Obama on this podcast. Like, <laughs> he, did, he did like Mark Maron's podcast and uh, Hillary you know, Clinton. Hillary Clinton did Between Two Ferns with yeah. Zach Galifianakis, and she did uh, Howard Stern too. Yeah, you know, that's that's a new age now. Is like all these um all these like really big name politicians are like going on these on like radio shows like that didn't used to be a thing that happened i would want to get the only i would literally want to get mitch mcconnell for our podcast but the the only reason is because i'd want to do it if we could be in the same room with him just so that the whole podcast while he's trying to talk talk i could like jiggle his neck fat (laughs) i just just want to ask him 
I just want to be like the guy from uh, Master of the Skies and be like, Mitch, are you not turtly enough for the Turtle Club? <laughs> Mitch, you're not. You don't seem turtly enough for the Turtle Club, Mitch. Dude, that guy. And he just his head just like recedes into his like suit collar. He's like, well, oh. what I think is that's what the dog was like. What does yeah. he even sound like? Does, does, yeah, he, sound he like. sounds like um. Remember in the Looney Tunes that like dog with the droopy face. He kind of sounds uh, like that guy a little bit, if you listen. So wait, that. in the Looney Tunes? Remember there was that Looney Tunes of the dog that was like, well, I don't think so. And he had like... Do you, a, mean, like, do you mean Goofy from Disney? No, it was like a droopy-faced dog. Oh, that dude. You mean... Yeah, so, I don't think that's true. That yeah guy. that guy. Yeah, he sounds oh, like that guy in real life. Yeah. Oh yeah, true. That's a good way to put it. That guy was the original. That dog was the original beta male. That- <laughs> it's just like Mitch. What do you, Mitch? What do you think about um Trump's response to the coronavirus? Well, I just think that you know, he's doing the best he can and he's trying really hard. <laughs> That's actually a really good impression. You should. Uh, you know. So I, my name is Mitch McConnell, and I just think that the impeachment trial halted the president's response to the coronavirus. Mouse <laughs> order. Um, uh, uh, all right, well, we got we got to wrap this up. We're yeah, at thirty minutes. We're at thirty minutes. Um, uh, any any closing remarks, Jackie boy? Uh, I guess our closing remarks is that for the next week, we're going to make social media pages. And uh, yeah. if you guys want us to talk about anything specific or have any critiques or observations, feel free to uh, tell us and we'll feel free to ignore you. And uh, I look and forward will, you know, to not taking your advice and just let us know. What not, you think. We will not respond to you because you are nothing but heathens to us. You are the listeners. So sit down yes. and listen, you plebs. Sit down and be our bitches. Nothing. And, and also – uh, another announcement um we are currently going we are in working now um maybe by the time this is even released it'll already be but we're working now on starting to put out these podcasts under uh, under the youtube page we have but also under the big chuckles production now uh, yes. you know, <laughs> once we get that squared away with our good friend renee fuentes yeah that should all be stuck to go and we'll be putting out content on their page as well as content on our own pages and you can always check in, and we'll always be here to give you the good old ultraviolets. Yeah, and, and go, and who do we mention? Yeah, go support Renee Fuentes. Uh, yes, who else yeah. we mention? Manny Cruz, Andrew Berg, and all the comedians we talked Nick, about today. They're Nick funny Pardo, people. Zach Zorovich, Rahul Andrade. Devin Bramble. Um, Devin Bramble. Tom Lamarca, <clears throat> Abe Hannigan. Abe Hannigan, Andrew Bergen, who we mentioned. Um, who else? Tony Landolfi, we already mentioned him. Yeah, Tony, we mentioned nice um, Brandon Lacaruba, also a good friend. Um, John Moskowitz. John, yeah, John Moskowitz. No, I'll give a shout-out to yeah. John. What up, John? It's been a while. Yeah. Um, any more shout-outs you want to drop in there? Uh, we'll do it some other time. We got, we have, yeah. There's like a million Next episode, if you, if, you didn't get, if you didn't get a shout-out, you'll get one. All right, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with Jack and I over here. Have a great week, and uh, see you next Thursday. Yep, Podcast Orange signing off.